Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Rachel Bouchard, and I will be guiding today's conversation. We welcome you to our From the Studio series, sponsored by EPCOR's Heart and Soul Fund, as well as the Canada Council for the Arts. Here at the gallery, we embrace the teachings of Tatawa, a Cree phrase meaning, welcome, there's room. In our house, even the virtual one, everyone is welcome. Before we dive into the subject, I'd like to highlight that this is an interactive event and we'd really like to hear from you. Uh, you're welcome to use the chat window on the side screen uh, to share your comments as, as we discuss with Lynn Malin. Uh, if a question goes unanswered uh, at the time, please know that we're, we're, we will review all questions before we wrap up today's event. So I'd like to start by giving you a brief introduction to today's guest, Lynn Malin. Lynn received her education from the University of Alberta and the University of Toronto. She attended many art residencies, including the Banff School of Fine Arts, Leighton Colony, the Artist Directed Residency Program at the Banff Centre, Emma Lake Artist Retreat, uh, the Emma Carr College in Vancouver, the Columbia Icefields Residency, the Gachelle Studio in Blairmore, Alberta, the Mohar Spain Artist Foundation and the Myers of Munich Foundation. Lynn has served as vice president and branch chairman of the Alberta Art Foundation. Lynn works in watercolor and oil on both canvas and paper and on the flexible film, Lexan. Lynn started as a landscape painter, later including still lives and gardens. Her interest in aerial perspectives have informed her later Lexan works. She's produced photo loops dealing with these aerial views from a helicopter and airplanes. In her uh, latest solo show at the Art Gallery of, of St. Albert, she produced large grids and works on Lexan and a photo loop of aerial views of the land which inspired the Lexans. Lynn Malin has been awarded grants by the Alberta Foundation for the Arts in 1991 and 2001 an Edmonton Arts Council project grant in 2011 and a travel grant from the Edmonton Arts Council in 2014. Collaborative public sculptures content uh, at the Terra Building in Edmonton, Recycles, which is at Beaver Hill Park in Edmonton, Inside Out, a human ecology building at the University of Alberta, and Pinwheel, which is at the Prince Charles Park in Edmonton. Um, she produced public installations like Elemental, which is um, at the Cardinal, Cardinal Collins Composite School in Edmonton, Fall Approach, which is at Bethel Transit Station in Sherwood Park, Waterworks, which is at the Emerald Hills Leisure Centre in Sherwood Park, and Color Play, uh, which is at the Enbridge Tower, uh, the Kelly Ramsey Building in Edmonton. And she was selected uh, the winner of competitions from the Alberta Foundation for the Arts, Arts and Public Places, the University of Alberta, and the Edmonton Arts Council. Since 1980, Lynn has had over 30 solo exhibitions, mm -hmm. and she is currently represented by Peter Robertson Gallery in Edmonton. Um, her work can also be viewed on www.lynnmalin.com and at the, on the Peter Robertson Gallery. So please take this time. Uh, with me to give a warm welcome to artist Lynn Malin. Welcome, Lynn. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we've had many lovely interactions over the years, and I'm so excited to hear more about your artistic process. Uh, so you'll have to turn your camera on. All right. Yeah, if you could just turn your camera on, Lynn. There we go. Hello. <laughs> Uh, there we go. Can you hear me? I can't get the video on. I can't get oh, the, no, it, can't it's on your, you. I can see you and I can hear you. Oh, okay. So um, you're going to want to go to your audio button. Um, Uh, sorry, we're having technical dif difficulties here. Um, let me just... Uh, 
I'm going to text Sarah to contact Lynn so that she can get her video and audio working here. Sorry, everyone. Um, so in the meantime, uh, I guess I can talk a little bit about uh, Lynn's studio practice. She current, currently has a studio uh, where the DC3 gallery used to be, and uh, she, she currently works and um, is living in Edmonton, but she's traveled extensively, which I think has really influenced her work. She also does go to the same location every year for the past 35 years, just outside of St. Albert and paints that area. And so it'll be interesting to discuss that with her um, when she gets back online here. I see she's joined the room, so I think we're good to go. I'm just going to send a note to Sarah. <clears throat> Hi, Lynn. Can you hear me? I can't. Sorry, Rachel, I can't hear you. I, I just can't get in. Uh, do you want to see? So, I'm going to go to the chat. Oh, there we are. Can you see me? I can see you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can um, you hear me? No. Oh, yes. Yes. But up on your side to the left, there's a the audio button. Now I can't hear you. Is that better? Can you hear me now? I can no. hear you. Yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No. Yes. <laughs> you can hear me? Yes. Good. Okay. I can't hear you. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Start presentation. Okay. Slide. None. Feed. Cancel. Edit. Start. Start. Hello again. I just did, I hit the panic button with the hope that it will uh, send a new link to Lynn because there's a possibility that there was a glitch with her audio. So I'm just going to restart this. I, I apologize. We'll just get this the things reset and okay. So let's see if Lynn will join us again. I'm just going to see if we can give her a call. So in the meantime, Okay, so Sarah's on it. So we are going to have the, um, the audio uh, functioning in no time. 
There she is. Hello, Lynn. There we go. Are you, is it working? I can hear you. I can hear you now. Fine. Okay. Perfect. I'm so sorry. Okay. No, we're ready. No, 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 it's all good. It's all good. This is this is the thing with technology, right? <laughs> this virtual I'm a Luddite. Luddite. Oh, this is so <laughs> yeah. wonderful. Thank you. It's wonderful to see you. <laughs> oh, wonderful to see you too and hear you. This is good. Yeah. <laughs> wonderful. Um, okay. Good stuff. Okay, so I was just saying before you you came on that that your studio is located next to DC3. That's yes. the, the previous uh, DC3 location. And I was just wondering, um, I spoke a little bit about your extensive travels and I was wondering how that's impacted your practice. Well, I feel very lucky to have traveled. I think it, it opened your eyes and your heart and everything. But one thing that I've done when I go away, I take little squares of watercolor paper yeah. and I draw and paint. And so when I get back, I can integrate some of those ideas into my work. And sometimes I make larger ones of the one of, of the work that I've drawn and painted. But these little watercolors to me are just like a little uh, treasure of where I've been. So I really like them and I pay a lot of attention in finishing them and making them uh, the way I want them to be. And it does really uh, inform my the rest of my work. When I was in a studio mm -hmm. residency in France, in Spain, I um, did a little watercolor every morning while I was having my breakfast and my okay. coffee. And then, um, so I have all of those and then I turned those into larger paintings and into monotypes. And it took me a whole year to finish all the work that I picked up in Spain for one month. So it was okay. fabulous. So they're very, yeah. it's very important. <clears throat> now, did you, uh, I, I'm interested in that process because watercolor is such a different process from oil. And did you transfer them in, was it an oil uh, painting that you would produce from the watercolor? Yes, sometimes from the watercolors and also from other pictures. And often they would um, take on a different character in the oil. And, um, but I just thought, I just kept these as little, uh, they were better than pictures, these little, uh, yeah. watercolors and it just brought everything right back so they're very yeah. informative to me yeah well, especially right. I'm sure putting down the light and the shadows mm -hmm. with watercolors yeah and getting the right color and the movement and they have to be fast and done clearly and yeah, it's very interesting yeah mm -hmm. oh, I'm gonna move on to the next slide here so these are some of your more recent pieces correct mm -hmm. Uh, these are large, uh, the large Lexans, 48 by 48, so four feet by four feet. Oh, wow. Okay. And um, I was wor I was working on them. Um, they're part of this whole idea of um, uh, looking down on the ground, looking down on the world, and yeah. making it into um, uh, an image that uh, could be from different places, too. So some yeah. are from, say, a desert, and some are from water, some are from the north. But uh, also, I'm working on uh, man-made sort of the difference between grids that man makes and natural right. marks. And I try to get the two of those sort of in opposition yet into one composition. So that's... Oh, it's really grids. obvious. Yeah. It's like the cartography yeah. of it, right? You have that whole, um, the Cartesian geometry right. in them. And, yeah. and I really like what... Well, and when you're looking at the land from from up above not these pieces so much but some a little bit later on you can really see that impact that we've had and and even the seeing the shelter belts that have been planted over the years to to help s prevent soil erosion you can see the grids like the lines around the fields that have been created yeah it's really it's really interesting and i think the evolution of of um change and development on land is very evident in, in the marks that humans make and the marks that nature makes. And I noticed this even going up in a balloon and looking down um, on uh, Lexar in Egypt about how the fields were made and how they were all banked and how the houses fit in and just the whole um, 
map of, of that little area. Right. How unique to yeah. the process of how it was used. Oh, and I, I appreciate that. Like the difference in, did you see a lot of similarities in how it was done here as opposed to what it looked like in Germany or in Egypt, sorry? Well, it, it was quite different. I, I found it very, very different. And sort of a lot of my images are much more prairie orientated because that's of right. course where I've been up or landing and leaving on a plane. Like even the big planes, as you just gradually get up, you get these views. Yeah. And uh, helicopter rides, they're just amazing for yeah. looking down. And that's one I took up to Devon and all the way back, all around El Edmonton, was yeah. um, was very informative. It was really it's beautiful, interesting yeah. to look down like that, like a bird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just such a nice perspective, isn't mm -hmm. it? It is. Yeah, and so this is more of this. This is the same work, the same body. Yes, work. this is the same body work, and and um, some of them. This is where when I was working on a lot of water imagery, you can see more on the left when I was doing that. Um, uh, you, we'll see later the installation in Emerald Hills Aquatic Center, right? Where um, I did twenty-one of these panels, um, and they're mounted on the walls, two inches up from the wall, so the water, the air can go, the light can go through them, become translucent, not necessarily. Oh, so yeah. when I put them up on the wall, you can sort of see a little bit about them, but when they're uh, two inches out from the wall, they really have, um, incorporate the light within the work. Oh, and they would change with the mm -hmm. change of, of uh, the light throughout the day. Absolutely, the yeah. ambient light just completely changes them. Yeah. yeah. So, and this is one that was in Land Watch. That was a show I had at St. Albert. Oh, okay. Um, in the, in the, at the Art Gallery of St. Albert. And it was, uh, they were, um, these were a series of nine grids and okay. they were all sort of green, sort of as, as um, they were done from summer books. And you can see they have um, lace, uh, imprints of lace, different yeah. types of grids on them. And um, uh, so this is one of the green ones in that. And I've, they stand on their own, but they also, I think, are interesting put in, in a group. Mm -hmm. I, I'm interested in how you have, there's such a layering process here, but yet they're still so translucent. How are you achieving that? Yes, in layers and being very careful not to overdo it. Right, Which yeah. I, it's so easy to do, to do too much. Yeah. And um, but uh, it is uh, it is done a lot of the color will go on first sometimes and then a, an imprint of you can see where the black is usually all done with some um, graphite. Oh, I love that with the carbon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and so that's worked into the into the grids and um, and then they're layered and some at the end have a bit of spray through a grid. So are you playing on the fact, so when you're using carbon in it and it's a landscape, are you playing on the fact of, you know, the, or the idea of carbon retention in certain areas or, or just, or do you just automatically want to put it into the landscape because of the, the effect that it has in the piece? Yeah, I, I think it's the density that you can get from it. And, and it's, it seems so natural too, even when yeah. it's mixed with the oil paint and rubbed into the oil paint, it yeah. creates m marks and movement and, um, so how are you rubbing it in? Is it is it a frottage that you're doing on the surface with? There is some of that. Um, there's some grids underneath that I rub on top through okay. the Lexan so it appears. Okay. Yeah. And that can be done with graphite or with pastel. And okay. you can see Lovely. some of these, how, how they're sort of very layered. The graphite on the top left and the bottom right is worked right, right into the oil paint. And then grids okay. are imposed on top. Okay, hmm. so there's that process of adding and taking away throughout yeah. the whole piece. And it's very layered in many ways. You can see things, the closer you are to it, the more you see, and they do change with the light. Yeah, and I love, again, you can see that grid, your grid, um, it comes up through the, the bottom left corner. Mm -hmm. It's really apparent there, and then it just kind of dissipates throughout the piece. Mm -hmm. So the connection between all these different yeah. um, uses of the land, actually, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's a, mm -hmm. yeah. So this is one of the a red grid. This is one I did with uh, Elizabeth Beauchamp. It was the beginning of, of the whole transition into 
the Lexan integrates, and I'd done large um, Lexan paintings that were sort of four feet by seven feet, six feet. And I put them, um, sometimes I put them in the back of my car, um, with the van, to put the lid up, and I just bungee them all there on a, on a heavy white kind of um, foam core. And mm -hmm. then I take them out and I paint the whole thing. And then um, just from the marks that I see and everything, like a, a landscape um, with this maybe small sky at the top and mostly the ground looking down across the land. So then what what I did is I said, well, Betty and I were talking about it. We said, why don't we just cut some of these up and put them together and put them in a grid and rearrange them? Because we were talking about oh, yeah. having a rearranged wall. So this started it. And so I said, well, I'm not cutting them up. You cut them up. So she cut them <laughs> all up. And, and, some, and we had to put some of them together because the cutting didn't work. And also sometimes we had to work back on top of them or had to put more marks on top or whatever. And then these are, they're smaller. They're 24 by 24. So two feet by two feet. Yeah. And, then, and they're pinned. Uh, they're done with a nail two inches up from the wall. It was a, put in a Harcourt house. I had to show in Harcourt okay. house. And um, they're, they look just like a skin of the earth. They're quite fabulous. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I've always wanted to show them again, but I've never had the opportunity because they are just the beginning of all these That's work, that that body, all the work yeah. that I'm doing now. So, so um, we have a question. How long would you say each piece takes to complete? Because of oil, I have to let it dry in between. So I'm usually, I have often work on two or three at the same time. Okay. And um, uh, probably um, at, at least two weeks. But if I'm working on other ones, it depends. The smaller ones, maybe a little faster I can work on. But um, yeah, it takes that long. You have to just. Yeah, the drying time. Which drying is kind time. of nice because that, that it offers you the opportunity to look at them um, mm -hmm. while it's still wet and maybe play with it a little bit, revisit yeah. it. That's yeah. right. Revisit it and also. Um, to relook at it. Now, the, this is, I'm very interested in public art, and I was very thrilled to get this uh, this with Elizabeth Beauchamp and I got this together. It's okay. hanging in um, at the university in the human ecology building. Oh. And um, it, we were asked to do a sculpture that uh, spoke to what human ecology was. And okay. uh, so this one is called Inside Out. So their feeling was they, do whatever is within the the human a human person and then yeah. everything that touches them like what they wear what they eat where they are the materials they use to build things where they live i mean that's sort of the progression and then out into the community and whatever but um right. so we asked all the uh people in this first year thing what do you think human ecology is what do you like about it why are you here and they gave us all these answers. So we wrote them all out. One okay. person said um, uh, physics was full. I thought that was the best. <laughs> it's not quite the course. I loved, I loved it. And I thought, well, maybe he just took it because he had a friend here. But no, he said, no, physics was full since it was the next best thing. But so all of these panels are, are uh, four, they're four feet by four feet. It's a great oh, size. Wow. Quite and nice. um, they have holes punched in them sometimes. They're all of different materials. There's glass. Um, and there's mirrors. text. Is there text as well? Uh, there's text written on it yeah. and uh, in in um, printed on with through, um, uh, what do you call those things, that letters that you cut of stencils, stencil stencils, writing. Yeah. And there's grids on them. And, and then there's screens in front of them that move back and forth. And oh. it goes between two stories. In the, wow. in the wall in the hallway and it's lit from behind as well as in front it's an exquisite piece I, I don't know how many people see it but everybody that goes to human ecology or or uh, the professors there and everything they love it because it it is manipulatable like people yeah. can go and move it when they want yeah and uh, they can slide the screens across is and, there a lot of light? Is it well? You said it's lit from behind. Yeah, yeah, there's some lights behind it. We had some lights put in behind it, so the lights can come through the screens, as yeah. well as lights on it. So it is quite an interesting piece. I'm yeah. very proud of it. It's like about 15 feet wow. wide and tall. It it's is, quite it's big. lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and this one is really playful. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. What is this one called? This is called Recycles. It's all about biking and recycles, recycles. So every a lot of the everything in this is something from somewhere else. So one is a bedstead, one is a grate, um, yeah. one is a radiator, you know, those are <laughs> radiators. And they're all built into bicycles. And we um, found, had people find things. We found things that, that could be used as a wheel or, or a, 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 a basket on the front or something on the back. Yeah. And um, it's, it, it's a, quite a wonderful piece in Beaver Hill Park. It was beautiful when it was painted, but as time went on, being powder coated, it's faded. So we wanted to get it spray painted again, but the city hasn't come up with um, the funding the to do it, but we will we will get it done because it's been up for 20 years or 21 oh. years so that's a long time and it does need a little pick me up so what is what are the little flags like up at the top well, it, it was supposed to be a festival a place to draw people in to play with kids especially and people to use it so right. all the pedals move and as the pedals move the whirly gigs at the top move and the whirly gigs are are, are people juggling and they're all sort of like street um performers, performers. Yeah. yeah so that's what it's about it's about um uh, looking at the street performers and coming in and using the thing so it's yeah often people would sit on it and pedal it and things i think it's yeah it's fun it's really fun thank you yeah yeah, yeah and this is a great um th this is kind of the in between the aerial work and the um the work um, plein air, right? Like the landscapes. Yes. Yeah. So this is very well, very much um, from the land. These were images that I took uh, from going north to um, La Laurent. And okay. we, we flew around in a plane up there. We went to fishing lodge and things. So I took lots of images from that. And um, you in the one that's closest, the one on the right hand yeah. side, you can see the water. And you can yeah. see the, the pink um, gra granite that's on oh, yeah. the rock, and then it's the trees and everything. So it's just, it's really a view from the north. And it's, um, it's all done on Lexan, and it's four oh. feet by six feet. Uh, it's in a box, a light box. Okay, I was going to ask because of the race, the profile makes it feel like it's a canvas, uh, oil on canvas, but mm -hmm. okay. It is a Lexan, and it's put with, there's, plexiglass in front of it and the Lexan and then um, a white um, acrylic panel behind it and it's adhered together then with lights behind it. Yeah. So, and it's a box. It's a light box it's about, um, I think it's about two and a half to three inches deep. Wow. And you can turn it on or off. And inside there's the area it's in the hospital um, mm -hmm. in the Hui center in the, at the Royal Alec hospital complex. Right. And um, it you can it, people can have it on at night if they wanted. They can have it off at night. You can direct it inside of the mechanical room that's right beside where the nurse's station is. Yeah. So every time I've gone there to see it, it's been lit like this. But sometimes they turn it off, I guess. And it's just as nice off as it is on, I think. Yeah, it would so. be really beautiful and uplifting with the lights on, I would yeah. think, just to yeah. give it that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is lovely too. Now, this is, um, you said that the pieces on the left, uh, if I'm if I'm correct, this was the piece we discussed it, that was in the studio, but that's to, that's simple, that's water, right? Correct? This one is, um, this is from a show that I did at the BAMP Center and, and okay. at the White Museum, the White yeah. Museum. And I did some of these images from the BAMP Center. But anyway, this is, the the show was called in light of winter and it was on for about three months in in the white museum and this is one piece of it and this one is called was called winter sky and oh, so it goes okay. from the dark to the light in the morning oh. so it's images from the sky it's all done on like it Sam. definitely has that cosmic feel because when when we were talking about the second slide and you were saying that it was water because it was at the aquatic center i was thinking i, I was way off because these ones like especially the top the top left it has that real, um, you know, cosmic. Very dark like winter looking, sky. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. And, yeah, and they're they're very um, they're very light filled. It looks it'll look very dark, but you have to get to see them. See so much information inside of each one. 
Yeah. And um, the, the idea was, um, so this was the winter sky and then I did one uh, fire because in the winter we have to keep warm. So one was a hot, one grid was all of fires Orange. And yeah. in the winter. And then there was glaci glaciers and lots of other images too in the show. It's quite a big show. And yeah. um, these ones are, the size of these are, they're two feet by two feet. Mm -hmm. So um, the whole size is quite big because there's about four inches in between each of them. And, so they and how are they mounted? They are uh, on Lexan, like all the ones are. I put them on, okay. I put the Lexan on an acrylic panel. Right. And then they're, it's just flat. And then there's a, a, a strip on the back that I hang them on a, a hanger or it's a mount. It's a French cleat is what it's called really. But I mean, it's a, you, you put yes. this mount onto the wall in acrylic and yeah. then you just hang this image on top. So you, when, if you walk from the side, you can see that it's just a very flat surface. Close to the wall, yeah. And it's, and it's two inches out from the wall. And so it also allows shadow from the image themselves, put a shadow on the wall. And as you walk by it, they slightly change because of how the light hits them. So it's, they're very um, active. Yeah, like, they, yeah, they really active. I love that. I love the way it, the color from left to right goes from dark to so light. And it's beautiful, like the changing of the day. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. From the night to the dawn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now we have another question. Do you have a preference for large or medium scale works? Ooh. That's really hard. <laughs> I, like, I, I like them both. I, there is a thrill, I have to say, about doing a very large piece and getting it all to work, which is a thrill. But right. little ones, small pieces, are, are just as interesting and very complex. I think the impact of the big ones is wonderful. And that's why when you put the small ones, like two feet by two feet together, it has a huge impact, whereas one has... A little less of a impact. okay so would you say that the smaller pieces are more gestural and quick and are they looser than a larger piece do you feel like you're more um focused on on the details in a larger piece or is that I, I think it's more the reverse in a way okay yeah i think there's more um the little ones can become very um perfect and complex and you're right on top of them whereas the larger ones you can use bigger brushes larger strokes you can be a little bit more gestural yeah okay i think i like okay. them both. yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is beautiful too where is this one located well this is a maquette that i did for um i was shortlisted for uh a show with at the arena at the arena, the ice arena. Mm -hmm. I was shortlisted for one of the sculptures or installations and um, I didn't get it, but this was a maquette for it. And it was, they were going to be four, four feet by four feet Lexan panels. They were all taken from the images of going around, looking down around Edmonton and, and um, the land. Right. So it, it was sort of that I worked on it. I think it's beautiful. What I'm doing now is I'm taking some smaller ones that are four inches by four inches. And I'm going to make some grids like this with with them to put. So on a would wall. it be would it be a, a collection of them in one, or you're talking about taking one and trans translating that on a larger canvas? Like no, I would just I would get all of these. Like I did this; they were four inches by four inches. I put together, and I, because I've always liked it, I thought I don't know why I just don't do some more of them. Yeah. Have, and, and put them on a, so the whole thing would be, um, say, you know, 36 by 36 or 40 by 40 when they're all put together and have right. the position of the colors. I think, I think it might be fun. So I'm working on some of those now. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah. The so work becomes sort of a big circle, you know, you go back to things and then go forward yeah. a little bit and then go back, Yeah. What's the longest you've had a painting in your studio? Uh, before you let it out like sometimes people will work on a painting for eight years 10 years and they'll all of a sudden see it again and they have an idea of how they want to finish it yeah have you had that happen I uh, yeah some some things that's true happen 
also sometimes my problem is when I get mad at them and they're not working for me, I paint over them. And then I kind of get, I feel that I shouldn't have because when I look at pictures of them, I took it earlier. I thought, you know, actually that wasn't so bad. Maybe I should have just kept it. But yeah. It depends on how you feel. But I usually do. Um, I think it's a good idea to keep things longer because if you let them go too soon, sometimes you'll see them and you'll think I should have maybe not. Let it out so fast. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So would you say that, how do you let everything out or do you, cause there are a lot, some artists say they only actually allow a third of their work to leave the studio. Is that the case for you? Uh, no, no, it isn't. I uh, honestly, I have to run, I have to run this, my studio I have to pay for my materials, my yeah. studio and everything. This is the, I'm not, I don't teach anymore. I just, this is what I'm doing. And yeah. um, financial things. So I sell, I sell everything it, that I can, you know, yeah. I, I won't. And there's a lot of things that I should have held back. Some things I feel badly about leaving, but I just find it. Um, I don't want to be in a conflict with, um, you know, my, the family, the husband, everything else that, right. you know, this is, I've got to contribute and I can't take too much from that other section yeah. of my life so i i um, i let it go I yeah do. yeah and repurpose some of them as you said i redo them Cho i chop yeah. them up i yeah. make words out of them do a lot of things i, yeah. I make collages out of some of them yeah it's a uh, it's so much fun rachel yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I agree i paint myself and it is we go into a whole different zone it's <laughs> it is yeah whole thing mm -hmm. Um, and I, I have another question for oh, okay. you. Uh, do you have any advice for emerging artists? Oh, I think just stick to it. Just do it. Yeah. Because um, I think your ideas change as you grow, but I think it's really good to keep doing it and not give yeah. up because um, yeah. it's such an interesting and expanding um, knowledge and uh, experience that you have just by doing it. So I just think for emerging yeah. artists, don't give up. And because emerging artists are so smart, they all know how to use that, you know, with the social media and the Instagram yeah. and all that. But they're much more, they could be giving me a lot of advice. In fact, I'll trap one someday and get them to tell me how to use it. <laughs> yeah, you can you can feed one another. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, it, I, you people. know, it, it takes me back to what you just said, which I found interesting about, regret over letting some of the work out however at what point emerging means you have to have the confidence to actually emerge into the market and without actually mm -hmm. letting the work out and growing within your practice uh, you have to sell to create for right? me <clears throat> i do some people are lucky and they don't have to necessarily be so much like that <clears throat> but uh, i find that for me it's it was very important that i that i contribute so I do sell. Yeah. <laughs> now this is a piece. That's a piece. The water piece in the Emerald Hills Aquatic okay. Center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I have a question about that. Um, what was your inspiration for this piece? The uh, the attendee says, "I love your work in Emerald Hills." What oh, was your inspiration nice. for the piece? Oh, that's so lovely. Well, it was water, and um, you know, even just studying how light moves through water and how if you see a pattern underneath it, like the tiles on the floor and everything, how it wiggles and how it moves. My mm -hmm. idea was to make this reflect um, how people see when they're in the swimming pool. So where we're sitting, this side, yeah. uh, there's a whole glass wall and, and there's all the pools. And you can Great. swim in the pool and look over and you can see these things on the wall. And I wanted them to uh, reflect the the colors and the joy and the movement and the splashing and everything else of the water and right. so it's supposed to be um about water and and it's i think it's called waterworks i think but anyway it's um supposed to give that impression of fun that and feel, it, it, yeah water. and i like the way it's the, it has the um the line of the, the building wall and the ceiling that work with it as well yeah that was a really a difficult thing to figure out for me um but you know i think when you see it it works so well in the building so i'm glad that i persevered it's natural and yeah 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 it's lovely
Thank you. Yeah. Oh yes, and this one is this is fantastic too. Uh, uh, where is this one? This is located at and, the old Holt Renfrew, right? Is, yeah. It's, well, yeah. you know, when you walk from the old Holt Renfrew across towards the new Embridge building, it's yeah. it's at the end of the walkway. Okay. And uh, so it's really in the Embridge building, and okay. it's um and it used to be it was joined to the Kelly Ramsey building, which was was an old brick building that used to be on right. the, Yeah. Uh, what is the name of that street? It's called, um, that's right behind it. Uh, it. It's sort of like a half street. Anyway, okay. I can't remember. And, and I think Artworks is downstairs in that now, and then there's a coffee shop at the bottom. But this is yeah. on the second floor at the end of this um, walkway. And yeah. It's and both, this one is also... Is this on Lexan as well? <clears throat> it's Lexan. Yeah. And it's on Plexi, because the same way are the acrylic panels. Right. And it's also mounted two inches up from the wall. And it has, um, it's supposed to refer to um, uh, Art Deco glass and color oh, okay. and the light that comes. Because the old building was, um, Kelly Ramsey was built sort of at the time when people were decorating things with art deco and and we're using glass as a as um images of nature in the building bringing sort of the outside in and the light in and so this idea was so people could come to work and look at this um these colors these bright colors with the patterns and it would mm -hmm. be joyful yeah colorful and that's what i want people to feel good about walking into the building it really is. It's uplifting, isn't it? I hope so. Yeah. 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 And we oh, so we have another question. How much involvement do you have in the installation of your public works? <clears throat> well, um, the, all of it, because it, it you have to make sure that it's the way you want to. And uh, there's lots of rules about it, like that there's it has to be engineered properly and it has to be. So there's lots of hoops that you have to go through but basically you have to you get have to get someone to install it for you and um which is uh and it has to be done perfectly and it's a, uh, the biggest problem often is the lights and the place because designers have an idea of where they want things sometimes right. it's hard to to As get the it. artist are yeah. you for public installations, do you are you present? Are you always present when it's being yes. installed? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think I yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would you have to come and install it, but you want to be there just to make sure that everything works right. out. Right. And it's always a panic. It in it's very you're just so nervous that it's not gonna look perfect. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure because it's yeah, yeah you're the, the big thing. You want it well represented. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. Um, so we have a comment um, that from a lady who has a large and little piece from you. Oh, nice. Yeah, she's just checking in. <laughs> oh, isn't that lovely? Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, and where is this? This is um, called Charlotte's View. It's a, it's a view from a ranch just um, west of Devon. And it, okay. And, um, so it's just a, a a painting from there. Yeah. I love the palette, the choice, the choice with the purples. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's a spring, it's a spring, late spring. So the cut there's flowers coming up and all the greenery and everything. So it's um it's from that area. And of course my paintings aren't very true to what's really there because I sort of add a few things every once in a while, change them. Yeah, as they work. Yeah, creative yeah. license. You have yeah, a creative exactly. license <laughs> or artistic license, I should exactly. say. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I can play God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is lovely too. So bright. I, I like the yeah. colors that you've chosen. Mm, thank you. Both of these are very much air, um, looking for at the beginning all the way across the land. So they're very. Right. Um, it's not straight down on the land like the right. uh, the land watches, but these are sort of um, views, foreground, middle ground, background gets sort of flattened as it goes out. Yeah. And prairie yeah, scenes. Lovely. Right. 
Yeah. I love that you know. So I'm this oh, is this one too. Mm -hmm. So the and are these all from the same location then? No, no? all different different locations. Okay. The other two, those two are canvases. Mm -hmm. The last three ones were canvases. This okay. is a, <clears throat> a Lexan, and um, you know maybe don't notice, but there seems to be sometimes often in these Lexans a little more drawing. Right. So you can see the graphite drawing in the grids in this, and um, also a lot of light will come through it more because of its transparent lucency, it's transparent. So yeah, yeah. It's a fall. It calls it's called fall from above. And this is the, the one that I've done a hundred of these. Okay. This is the one it's a, a large Lexan piece and um, it was in the show in St. Albert and I wanted it in that show because this is the last time that I could do anything from that area because I'd been going out for about 30 years to this one place on a hill at the end of corner yeah of a farmyard and i looked down on this field and i used to paint it that it was actually more uh the regular way you know a little more like we look at things foreground made it on background straight on right. like the regular traditional right and as time went on it became more looking across it and then more like a bird and this one is the, the trestle bridge is right in the top right you can hardly see it there it's sort of okay. it's got a red line across in black it's drawn in with graphite and yeah it's um I was at the corner of this field um, one day working, and there, it's on the top of a hill. And I pull mm -hmm. my things up from the car and get it all ready, and then start painting and everything. And anyway, this man came up and said, "What are you doing here?" In a loud voice that I just about dro dropped off the edge of the hill. And um, I said, "You know, well, I'm I'm just painting." He said, "Well, you know, there's so many people come out here, and they just picnic and leave all their junk and blah blah." And he said, "No, no, I'm just coming out to take everything away. Don't do anything." And I just, I just want to paint this view because it's so beautiful. <laughs> look at this, where you can see this, and look what that is. And I talked to talk to him about the view. He yeah. says, well, you can come back here anytime, then. <laughs> I'm sorry oh. to bother you. So that and was really nice. Thirty-five years later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then uh, some. It now it's a all uh, developed into a bunch of houses and things. Oh, so that yeah. just broke my heart that one. But I, I wanted to do one more piece of that for that show. So. Yeah. That. So this would have been how long ago was this one done? This was done um, two years ago, two years ago. Okay. Just okay. from today, but I mean, it was in the show last year, so it was one, only about one and a half years old when I put it in. But I was I was working on it because I wanted that last, the last images before they got wrecked. So so you said that um, with the passage of time, there's been development. How, are are yeah. you? removing that from are, are you working from an old image because you're still going to you're working up and out right so you're still going to the location is that to get the light and the color and the mood i can't go to this location anymore because it's gone oh okay. yeah completely because it's all piled up and everything the okay. the trestle bridge may be there i don't know but the the roads are all changed and you know i got disorientated and so i've sort of never been back but um I do go to lots of places again, over and over again. But this one I have done in watercolor and oil on canvas and oil on paper yeah. and Lexan. I've done this many different ways, this one scene. And um, it is a, and I've taken lots of pictures of, sometimes I go through the pictures and maybe do a smaller one of the, from a picture, but. Right. Yeah, it is, it's a goner. Yeah. <laughs> and your florals. Yeah, these are, it was interesting to me that you work on florals as well as the landscapes from the aerial view because it's kind of the florals are kind of a micro view and then the, mm -hmm. the, um, the aerial view is such a monumental view of the landscape. And then you have, uh, I find it interesting because you have cut flowers and then you have um the flowers in their in in their um natural environment mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so do you play on that at all like i'm just thinking of the whole deridian thing you know that um the quote uh i i have it here he states such a flower always bears within itself its own double whether it be the seed or the type the chance of its program or the necessity of its diagram and you've done both really because mm. as a seed, it would have continued to bear seed and, and live on. But then when you immortalize it in a vase, 
it's mm -hmm. taking on a different life, right? Yeah, it really does. And I always think that um, even in a garden, a lot of times you don't see every flower. So I try to make every flower have its own space and its own um, character and voice and vision. And yeah. in, in the still life, similarly, I think, um, uh, you know, it takes a lot of time to grow a flower and to think about it and have it. So when, when the flower is picked and cut, of course, it's going to die. So, right. um, and I, um, I always find that very odd that you, that you, um, you know, you can go into a store and there can be, but, you know, so many pails of beautiful flowers and you sort of think, Ooh, they're yeah. going to die. It's so sad. So I really have a feeling that, you know, when I do take a flower and I put it in a, um, in an arrangement, as in a still life and everything, I want to get each of them a special place and have right. them a life. And yeah, and it's it is it's interesting how. Uh, so, why do you have the moose on the left side in both pieces? Yeah. That's I I just think I w wanted to give the idea that this is a Canadian painting from Western Canada. And so sometimes right. I just like to put the, wet, the our animals in it. So I like to have yeah, them. Yeah, context. Give me a context. Yeah, context. Yes. So it's a, it gives it, I think, as often uh, landscape people have a sense of place yeah. in their work. And yeah. um, a lot of people that write have a sense of their origin or a sense of place in their writing. Well, for me, um, I like to have, a sense of place in my still lives and I want them to be as important as my landscape. So I do sometimes borrow a moose or a coyote or something and just pop it in there. Just yeah, it's interesting too myself. that you have the, the, the checkered pattern mm -hmm. um, in the grid, it's the grid yeah. again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great way to integrate it into the piece. Yeah. And I think, yeah, it's part, I guess it's mm -hmm. part of the obsession. I also like the idea that, that um, there's an overall uh, design feeling in a way in some of these still lives that have patterns and things that, yeah. and then also with some flowers that maybe aren't even from the same season. I don't mind if we mix them up like that too, a little bit like the Dutch. It's, yeah, the uh, diversity the of Dutch. it. <laughs> and also I like the, um, or I appreciate the your use of line, how you have the red lines, but you've allowed the white. So is the white the actual canvas? or you uh, you, Usually, sometimes it is. Oh, that's beautifully done. Design. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's yeah. interesting. Um, now, we have another question. Do mm -hmm. you do you do commissions? Yes, I do, of course. Yes. Okay, wonderful. So they can contact either Peter Robertson Gallery yeah. or the Art Gallery of Alberta. Yeah, either They're, one. Uh, the Art yeah, but but um, everything now is going through Peter. So okay. uh, and it, it's a wonderful to belong to a good gallery. It's very very important for an artist, and so I'm thrilled to be there. And yeah. I do take commissions and have done lots. And often I do um, try to do two pieces so that the that they have a choice, or sometimes they just direct me um, as to what they want for a specific place. Right. Sometimes it, there's there's sometimes there's a lot of freedom too. They just say <clears throat> they want something cer a certain size and whatever. Yeah. But it it is actually really wonderful to work on a commission because then you don't have to keep thinking of what to do. Although I never really have too much trouble thinking of what to do. <laughs> <laughs> it gives me a it's like a, it's like a puzzle. Yeah. So which is really interesting to figure out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever do you often go into their spaces and and get a sense of yes, awesome. the light and everything? Yeah. yeah. Or you go in. Look, sometimes I've gone into people's gardens and taken photographs and looked at them. Oh, and, that's and rearranged them for them, and then I put them in a painting. That's great. That's a yeah. great idea. It's a lot of fun to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. All right. So we only have a few <laughs> minutes left. Uh, I guess I should reach out to. Um, the attendees, does anyone have a question that they'd like answered before we're done? It doesn't look like it. I have another comment from the client who owns, uh, she says, I have a large landscape on Lexan that is backlit, installed in a den Ooh, that has no window. The effect is remarkable, gives such an open feel. So oh, that's wonderful. <clears throat> Good. Thank you for 
for telling me that. I just love to know that people enjoy them and that they have a, a space and a place for them that, it, that they work. That's yeah. Wonderful. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And we also have um, your link available to the attendees uh, just so they can view your, your work at other Peter Peter Robertson Gallery or at the AGA. Mm -hmm. Includes your bio. Yeah, and I have a, and I also have a website. Um, but it, website is I don't know how it, it's got a lot of a lot of work and a lot of it is gone. Most of oh. it, it is a way for me to save some of my images too. But um, but it's it's got a lot of things, a lot of variety in it. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to see that mm -hmm. again the history of the different bodies of work and yeah. And yeah, and we have, it, yeah. Yeah. We have a comment uh thanking us for thanking you for the beautiful interlude to to her day. It's Lynn. I'm not sure if she's, she's Oh, nice. Famous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And I have another question. Do you have a regular work schedule? Um, well, I used to be much more regular when I, the kids were living at home and they went to school or my husband went to work. So he'd go to work and I'd, I'd go to my work and I worked a little longer then. But now, now that he's retired, he, he wants me to be around more. So I'm working less. I'm finding it harder to work as I get older, a little more arthritic in the hands and not, and difficult, more difficult to use my hand eye coordination things. So it's just a lot of things. Aging isn't easy. But um, mm -hmm. I still try to work uh, four hours a day. So I usually work in the morning if I can for about four hours or I try to get it in and I try yeah. to work every day if I yeah. can. Yeah, that's that's really, yeah, I've heard that said a lot uh, where artists say it's you show up, you show up, you show up and then boom, there's the moment and everything happens in this small window. But you just have <laughs> to keep showing up, right? Yeah, yeah, you, absolutely. Sometimes yeah. you just rearrange things. <laughs> yeah. But it is it is very interesting to keep working, and it's also really interesting to have several things going at the same time, so that you can always go in with something to to start working on right away. Right. I love that. I love that right. feeling of, um, and I love working alone in my studio, even though it doesn't have a window. It's not so fabulous anymore. It's in a chunk. The building is pretty not great, but I tell you, it's a, a magical place for me. I don't even need music. I just work. So yeah. it's, it's yeah, it was, where I can have a dialogue with my own color, drawings, paintings, whatever, and work. Yeah. It's the, been nice. Perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, can, I can appreciate that. I have so many nice comments. Can you see the, the, chats, the chat bar? No, I can't see the chat bar. Well, we have so many beautiful comments thanking you for the talk and for sharing. Beautiful as always. Um, thank you for the presentation. And we we're actually um, it's time to wrap it up. It's been, oh. it's been absolutely wonderful. Um, I, oh. <laughs> is there anything in closing that you'd like to share from your lifetime experience as an artist? You have two minutes. OK, well, the most important thing is that I can talk about my work to someone who is interested in hearing about it, because I think my friends are mighty bored. <laughs> and they don't want to listen to do much more. And because it is so much a part of you, so I just appreciate so much this opportunity. Um, and I hope I didn't sound too ridiculous. But, oh, it was um, wonderful. No, I just, no, I, I just I, love the opportunity. It's just so marvelous that there is an interest in my work. You and know, that's interesting, too, wonderful. because you say you're introspective in the studio, mm -hmm. but there really is that that collaboration, that that second voice, uh, to share oh, it's just some kind wonderful. of insight. It's, it, I'm sure it's it's really great for your practice too. It is just so wonderful to have someone say, I have the painting and I've had it for 10 years and I still love it. I'm thinking, oh, isn't that wonderful? I think yeah. it's so good. I mean, maybe, maybe I'll just get back in that studio and work a little harder and not, <laughs> yeah. not lose my confidence or my energy because it's... Uh, it's wonderful, and I appreciate it so much. I appreciate yeah. the interest. Yeah, well, it's been it's been an absolute pleasure, Lynn. Uh, thank you so much for for yeah sharing your experience and uh, talking us, explaining some of the processes. It's been great. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. And have a, 
enjoy the rest of your day. I don't think it's going to snow. <laughs> I hope it's not going to snow. I'm going to quickly run downstairs and get myself a good big cup of coffee before I attack the world. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for everything, Rachel. I appreciate You're your, your vision. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Good. Bye now. Bye-bye.